Hi guys, welcome. Welcome back to, well, you guys know what I like to do. Uh, today I am actually in Pleasant Valley Cemetery in Hammondsport, New York. I kind of wanted to stay local today. I got a lot of stuff to do around the house and stuff like, like that. So I decided to stay local today. Besides, this is a story I've been wanting to tell for a while about who might be possibly the most important person to ever come out of the Bath Hammondsport area. So, we're, I'm going to take you guys on a little stroll through the cemetery. I don't know. To me, there's just something serene about a cemetery and walking through a cemetery. But I'm going to tell you a little something about this guy. Born in 1878 in Hammondsport, New York, Mr. Glenn Curtis was an American aviation and motorcycle pioneer. He began his career as a bicycle racer before moving on to motorcycles. Mr. Curtis actually held pilot's license number one. He was the very first person in the United States to ever hold a pilot's license. In 1902, he began manufacturing with his, his own single cylinder engines that he built. In 1903, he set a then motorcycle land speed record at 64 miles per hour. And on January 24th, 1907, he set an unofficial world record of 136.36 miles per hour. He remained the fastest man in the world, according to all the newspapers at the time. But they all gave him the nickname of the fastest man in the world until 1911. When his motorcycle was broke, record was broken in 1930. On November 10th, 1910, he took off from a temporary mounted platform on the forward deck of the cruiser USS Birmingham. His successful takeoff the flight marked the beginning of a relationship between Mr. Curtis and the Navy that ended up lasting for decades. Mr. Curtis and his family they moved to Florida in the 1920s where he found 18 corporations, served on civic commissions, and donated a bunch of land and water rights. Traveling to Rochester to contest a lawsuit brought by former business partner, August Herring, Mr. Curtis suffered appendicitis in court. He died on July 23, 1930 in Buffalo due to complications of appendicitis. Now I know I left out a bunch of stuff about this incredible man, if you want to read more about him, go ahead and try his Wikipedia page. Trust me, you're not going to be disappointed in what you find out. And this, right here, they've actually got a family plot set up for him. And this, this is not his grave. This is just part of the family plot. Mr. Curtis is actually over here. John Curtis, 1878 to 1930. And I'm assuming this right here is probably his wife. And this right here. This right here would be his his son. 1912 to 1969. So. This is, uh, I figured since I was out doing graves, I kind of had to go to my area at least once and tell you guys all about Mr. Glenn Curtis. You know, there's the, the Glenn Curtis Museum, if you guys wanted to visit that. There's, I don't know, you guys can go down here and see his grave too. It's actually a pretty cool little monument they got here for him, and they got a couple of his family plots over right here and so yeah so you guys know me I gotta leave the penny actually we're gonna throw this on the screen a lot of people have already been here they have rocks and coins and there's a navy coin right there But 
thanks guys thanks for joining me on this uh i need i need some help from you guys i need to know where, what graves you want, just want to see within the area i've got a list of things to do but if there's anything special you guys want to see could you let me know but other than that thank you for joining me today this is been a cool little thing cool little day but if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe to the channel there's gonna be a lot more coming up so I hope you all have a good day.